joining me today for a review of the Sunday newspapers. Two guests, I hope, are opinionated, but not the rest of those things. The civil liberties campaigner, Shami Chakrabarti, and the leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage. And so to the front pages. Um, well, there'll be a lot of, there's a lot of coverage of that Millie Daly case, which we'll come on to later on. Um, some of the other front pages, uh, Sunday Telegraph, their Olympic tickets farce and saying that the middle classes are going to lose their stranglehold on places in England at uh, church schools. They seem to be running a civil liberties campaign at the top of the paper. Free Pashmina, it says. I don't know what Pashmina has been done or where she's been in prison, but there we are. Sunday Times, um, crime maps expose your local thieves. Also got an Olympics ticket story there and that secret tape about uh, on Chris Hewn that you were hearing about in the news mm. as well. Uh, the Observer, middle classes are going to pay or should pay £35,000 for old age care. This is a new proposal uh, coming out. Um, and there's just one of the, the many front page headlines about Milidad. A lifetime of killing, says the Sunday Express, suggesting that there are other cases involved. Well, Shami Chakrabarti and the head of UKIP, uh, Nigel Farage, both with us to talk about all of that. Where shall we start? Well, I suppose we, we, ought, to, we ought to carry on with the, with the Dowler story because it, it is dominating so, so much debate this weekend, um, front pages and, and inside stories in a number of the, a number of the papers. I think that uh, Lord Macdonald's contribution was one of the more thoughtful ones. I, I, I have to say this is not easy stuff at all. Uh, he's quite right that it's always going to be an ordeal to be a victim or a witness in, mm. in, in the justice system, in the criminal justice system. The question is how you can, uh, you can balance um, the, the, the fair trial rights of the defendant with some, with some dignity for those who, who have to participate yes. as victims so and witnesses. Millie's sister said that the day uh, the family were cross-examined mm -hmm. um, by the defence QC was the worst day of their lives even worse than the day when they found that Millie's body had yeah. been... But wasn't that because of the coverage of it? I mean, I'm just struck, Shami, that privacy has dominated our national debate over mm. the last couple of months mm. with super injunctions Absolutely. and with criminals not being deported mm. because of their rights to privacy and family lives. And, mm. and in this whole human rights agenda that we're living under, this poor family have had no privacy whatsoever. Isn't well, there an argument? Isn't there an argument to say, OK, I accept what Ken MacDonald says, that a defendant must be able to use whatever tools he or she needs. Isn't there an argument in a case like this to say that you don't have press coverage until after the verdict has been reached? Well, the, the, the problem with that, then, is that people feel that it isn't open justice. And there's a, you know, there's a, a, look, we have, for example, in-camera hearings in family law cases, yeah. and you see newspaper campaigns about the injustice mm. of secret justice. But now, this is a jury, though, isn't it? I mean, this is, this is 12 people sitting there that ultimately have to make a decision. Absolutely. I would have thought that that actually could happen without mm. well, it, well, it, well, it could, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's possible that that can happen mm. in certain very sensitive cases. But we've also, in this country, since 9-11 and all that, been moving more and more and more t towards secret justice. Mm. And in something as important as the criminal justice system, both for victims and the wider public and for defendants, we tend to want to see justice done yeah. um, and, and not just wait for a conclusion to emerge when the, yes. when the smoke goes up. Very, di very difficult stuff here. What I think is interesting about so much commentary in the papers is that there's a suggestion that the police are pointing fingers at the lawyers and the lawyers are pointing mm. fingers at the police. Clearly this whole experience was miserable from the, yes. the Dalla family. From the moment they were interviewed mm. as witnesses to the, the, the media coverage to the experience of being mm. cross-examined in court. Mm. And I think that uh, uh, yeah. it's, it's easy um, for everyone to point fingers at other aspects of the system. It's much harder to, to come up with anything mm. that's really constructive. constructive. Well, um, one thing that's been kind of come up oh. with by both the family um, and indeed uh, the killer's daughter is the death penalty. Mm. I mean, this has been talked about again. Um, any possibility whatsoever? We've had referendums of all sorts of things. <laughs> is, th is this ever going to come back, do you think? Well, it, c it won't, of course, if we're part of the European Union, because membership of that expressly forbids the death penalty. But even taking that out of it, um, I think there's been a big change in attitudes in this country about the death penalty, and I just detect that amongst the younger generation there is no great desire for it. And I suspect if we had a referendum on the death penalty, I think now, albeit narrowly, the country would actually reject it. Mm, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I agree let's, with that too. It's only China and America that have odd ideas about the death penalty. Let's turn to uh, your next story, Michael Gove, who's coming on later yeah. on.
um, this, this looming classroom <coughs> strike? Well, I mean, the last few weeks we've seen government U-turns and there have been one or two comments saying, well, is this like the Heath government? Mm. Is it really in trouble? Well, the big confrontation, it seems, starts this Thursday with mm. nearly three quarters of a million public sector workers going on strike over pension reforms and uh, Michael Gove who's your guest later, is right in the front line of this. He's got a tough week coming up, and the Independent are suggesting that uh, he's going to get really tough, and he's going to CRB check parents, and he's going to find something constructive for children to do at school on Thursday. I, I sense that this confrontation with the public sector unions over these reforms uh, could really be the acid test of this coalition. Can, certainly the, 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 the Sunday Telegraph is, is calling for major changes to the law. Um, let's keep moving on because we haven't got a certain amount of uh, crime maps you've chosen here, Shabby. Well, Explain it, it, to us what crime maps well, actually this are. Is, I, I pick this because I think this is one of those non-stories oh. that is put out as a kind of macho piece of posturing. Um, we are told that there's going to be a website, or there is a website, and, uh, um, a, a government-sponsored website, and this website is going to contain the names and the convictions and the hometowns of adult mm. offenders and tell us what they've been convicted for. Excuse me, haven't local news newspapers been doing this for years and the the junior minister in the home office says he's going to take on the civil liberties lobby and take That's on the you. advice like that yeah <laughs> well not personally but but yes um, and, and, and what i you know what i think is more revealing mm. than um, than the information itself on this website is the fact that in one of the worst recessions that this country has ever faced everybody opposition and government busy posturing on law and order often with relatively minor um, tweaks to, um, to existing, um, existing... They're confusing signals though, aren't they? Because tough today, but a few weeks ago they were talking about halving yeah. sentences for those that admitted guilt. So it, they're, 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 they're very conflicting signals, yeah. Is it, it possible to, to have a rational debate about law and order? Discuss. Discuss. <laughs> well, is it possible to have a rational debate about the Greeks at the moment? Discuss. It's a great, it's a great um, <laughs> yeah. headline you showed from Sunday Express there, Nigel. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, I think the point about this is... Greeks facing a Spartan future, boom, boom. Yeah, I mean, my own view of it is that Greece is bust. She can't possibly meet her debt repayments. The sooner she gets out of the euro, reorganises her debts, the better. That's my own view of it. But I think the real story here is that Greece has had its democ democracy literally stripped from it. They can't make decisions anymore. They're being told by the bully boys in Brussels, you must accept this austerity package. The home of democracy, uh, after all. Well, that's right. That's right. And, and, of course, they're taking to the streets in big numbers. There's been very significant level of violence. And the big vote comes on Tuesday, because the Greek parliament votes on Tuesday whether to accept the measure or not. Um, and it is just a desperately sad situation, because this country, which had never have joined the euro, is now being kept inside an economic prison. And David Cameron has said that uh, <laughs> we're not going to be involved in the next stage of well, the bailout. Well, yeah, I mean, he said that because we're not in the Eurozone, we haven't got to help. Look, we've already committed 12 billion sterling of UK taxpayers' money to the bailouts of Portugal and Ireland. Through our membership of the IMF, we'll be helping with this Greek bailout. And perhaps to make matters even worse, Cameron is backing Christine Lagarde to take over from Dominic Strauss-Kahn, somebody who'll take over the IMF, who will help with these yeah. bailouts. So it is going to cost us money. Meanwhile, um, we've, we've got the Chinese Premier yes. uh, in this country, and um, the Chinese are buy, <laughs> buying up most of Southern Europe, as far as I can tell. They, they seem to be looking to um, buy some influence as well. And, and so the Chinese are saying that they will buy up Greek bonds. That's fine. It may mean that the Greeks are able to borrow yet more money, but what it won't do is get back to the basic problem that the debt repayment level that the Greeks are facing is simply too high. Yeah. Well, I had a, uh, on the subject of the Chinese... Chinese Ai the, Weiwei, I, the, well, well, it's just the a, artist. A, yesterday I had one of those aha moments because I read <laughs> that the Chinese Premier is, is mm. due in London for talks at number 10 and, of course, this sets the, the, um, the release on bail, only on bail, with conditions mm. of Ai Weiwei a few days ago in mm. context. Um, and, of course, we, you know, we have a piece um, in, in The Independent by Paul uh, Fallaly saying, yes, he's free on bail, but what about all the others in China, all the other prisoners of conscience. What about the other uh, human rights problems in China? I was kind of brought up to believe that with economic progress will mm. come progress on human mm. rights. That doesn't seem Not to be universally the case. The so case. if they buy Greek bonds, we can turn a blind eye to all of this. Well, is, that, I, is, know, is that what you're saying? I guess I, I, guess I am worried that, you mm. know, will we be less critical, will we be less campaigning um, in relation to mm. human rights violations in China that set all our problems, you know, 
so much in the shade if, uh, mm. I if China owns Europe. Only time for a couple more. Um, Nigel Farage, you'd say, chosen, I think, the tickets. Well, it's been a big... Lots, lots of ticket stories everywhere. Yeah, I mean, there, huge debate. Everybody thinks it's a farce. And the story that hasn't yet come out but has today on the front page of a Sunday Telegraph is that another one of the great benefits of our European Union membership is that we pay the total cost for the Olympic Games, but we cannot make sure the tickets just go to UK people, British taxpayers. We have to share them with the rest of the European Union because of single market rules. And I think this is going to make people who've applied for tickets and haven't got them hopping mad. Nora. You are incredible. You, ma well, you manage, you well, manage it's it every true, time. But it's true, <laughs> you see. Well, I didn't get my <laughs> tickets. Right. Okay, so I'm okay, going to well, blame the well, Europeans for that. Story. <laughs> now, I, I, want hear, I want to hear a European aspect to this story. Andy Kershaw. Um, well, this is, this is a, a week where we, we think about music a lot. Glastonbury's going yeah. on. Andy Kershaw, uh, a very much admired uh, DJ on BBC. Terrible time in his private life and he's now telling, telling all. Is that right? Well, well, uh, well uh, he, he writes actually quite a positive, uh, mm. a positive story. Um, it, it, it's not something that many of us would want to do, to, you know, to mm. expose the blood mm. and guts of a mm. difficult family experience. But he, he, he writes quite touchingly um, in, in the Mail Review about mm. how his life yeah. was, was, it was in tatters, really, because of you know, marital trouble uh, and actually being refused custody to his children, mm. which I think is a really important point because mm. there are legal aid reforms going through at the moment, which, which would mean there would be no uh, legal aid in uh, custody disputes between parents um, because this is not seen and as And he was important. on his uppers at this point. He you was on his well uppers it, yes. and, and, you know, it, it, to be refused access to your child, I think, is okay. one of the, you know, the, the worst things yeah. that can happen. You need some legal advice. Very quick final thought, Glastonbury. I don't think, I don't see you as a, a Glasto boy. No, no not quite state, my so, thing, but, um, um, but uh, a wonderful picture of... Uh, Nancy Delalio being, being wheeled, taken along in a, in a wheelbarrow and just a reminder that you know we thought that we were never going to see rain again this summer and here it is it's June it's raining hard it's mud at Glastonbury and thank goodness for the roof at Wimbledon because the tennis is still going on absolutely right well on that on that meteorological note <laughs> <laughs> thank you both very much and to the weather